workplace or in different places. Um, and Islam deals with prevention rather than cure. So Islam says, look, alcohol is bad for, for, for human beings, yeah? So God Almighty, what he's done is that, and when I say he, it's not a male, by the way. It's just in a royal majestic way, yeah? So it says, better that you don't drink it. So it's better to stay away from it rather than drink it and then go to rehab. And, and it causes a lot of destruction and devastation to the family as well, you know, and the children, etc. So when it comes to this issue, we believe prevention is better than cure because we believe even shaking the hands. Like in the workplace, for example, some companies have incorporated that the door is left open. And that's very interesting because as Muslims, like for example, if, we, if I'm in a room with a opposite gender, a woman, the door should be open. I should not be in a secluded place with her. So some of them had issues with, for example, the opposite gender touching the females, maybe knees, maybe these kind of gestures. But again, she might not be comfortable with that. Some might say, what's the harm in it? But again, we just say, just cut the, cut the whole problem from the roots. You know, maybe we won't have me too, you know. But anyways, uh, let's talk about us. Yeah, get me yeah. too for a second. So what's your guy's worldview when it comes to the creator? Um, I'm a Roman Catholic. So you're a Christian? Yeah. Okay, yourself, are you? An... Uh, no, I'm an atheist. I'm you're just an atheist, atheist. okay. Yeah. Christian, atheist, Muslim. Okay. So, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> interesting mix. So, what we're saying is this. So, basically, let's talk about a bit about yourself. Yeah. Because we believe in some kind of a power. So, is they? What's the reason? Like, I, I always say, I stopped you. I talked about your glasses. Your glasses, they're red color. They have a specific shape. They have been designed, and they have a purpose. Would you say, for example, that you yourself are more complex in design, more unique in design? Would you not then say that that calls for that there must be an intelligent designer behind your creation? I don't know. I mean, I struggle with my belief. I do. I like. I would like to believe in something, but okay. I just. I just think it's too complex. I, I don't know. I don't know where I get my mm. my roots from, like nature, nurture. I, I don't know. Okay. So, so for example. Would you not say, for example, that if you was to walk down the road and you was to see a, your glasses on the floor, yeah? And you never went to the factory, you don't know the brand. Would you not look at that and be like, well, there's, there's a specific shape to it and it seems like it fits a specific purpose. There must have been an intelligent design behind it. Doesn't it call for it? Like, you know, for example, that your, your glasses are designed not that you went to the factory, but you know it's designed even though you haven't gone to the factory. It's innately you affirm that. So would you not say then, therefore, that we can come to a conclusion that there must be a higher power by just looking at the way we are created, like our eyes, our ears, our tongue, you know, our, the, the, the smells that we can smell, the taste that we can taste, the stuff that we can hear, see. There must be an intelligent design. Well, I think um, a lot of it stems from evolution, right? So a lot of, a lot of uh, the human traits and characteristics and physical yeah. capabilities and things like that, they all come from you know, descendants of thousands and hundreds. Okay, but the thing is, even if we go with that, evolution is a blind process. How can a blind process give rise to order? For example, why is it that your eyes are where they are? Or your nose or your mouth, that you have, you know, teeth? you know, in the right place for us to chew, you know, chew, we have saliva. So what I'm saying is, it's impossible for random processes to give rise to order. And like our DNA, our DNA is information. And our DNA works in, you know, it's, it's, like, a, it's, it's like a factory. You know, the fact that, you know, my nose tip stops here, not longer because of my DNA, yeah? So there is information that is being, you know, um, shared. And yeah. that's the reason why we look the way we look and the way we're created. We can't, we can't say that that is a random mother nature doing its job. It has to be an order setter. There must be I, some yeah, power that's it. I was say, I don't see how like the idea of um, evolution is any more blind than the idea of like religion. Okay, religion to a side, we're talking about God Almighty, a higher power, yeah? What we believe is that if, if there is, there, there must be a higher power to give rise to this. And if there's intelligence, there's, inf for example, our DNA has information. Information is, if there's information, there has to be intelligence. So what we see is then, our phones are programmed. Yeah, our PCs are programmed. There, uh, there is a program set on, there's someone that's made a program. So what we see is that there must be a higher power that created us 
and given order from our DNA to our existence to assess the cell of the food yeah, that I we just think the way that you know DNA and mutations and things like that work is that they're subject to their environment. So, but do they act randomly? What I'm saying is well, that no, the, no, the, 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 the thing that changes isn't the human beings; it's their environment in which they live. It's the mutations well, that enable us to live better. Yes, easier. of course. So I've, it's just like in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, right? When you know in East Africa, where humans apparently originated from, yeah. it's because the you know because of the seasons, droughts, whatever. Yeah. As soon as all these areas of forest became plains, that's when it became uh, viable for nature, for human beings, to learn to walk across exactly. different areas instead of climbing trees and relying on that kind okay. of um, sustenance and things like that. So, exactly. in that example, right, it's, it's the idea that those mutations actually are what led us to survive, and so therefore those mutations became. Of course, what but, is the ideal yeah. that we have today? Of course, but mutations happen. We believe that species, for example, you have birds with a, a longer beak or a shorter beak. Yeah, that is based on its surroundings and its survival. Yeah, but again, there was something that set that order. Yeah, now those birds within their colonies or well, you know, wherever they're living, that based on their survival, obviously there's certain features that change about them. Yeah, we accept that, but we don't accept that we evolved from chimpanzees or whatever it may be so even then in the sub-saharan desert etc there was a specific time where there was life or like there was that we can survive what we're seeing is that there must be it's either there was a disorder and randomly these things happen or there was an order set up so we say that god almighty a higher being a higher creator must exist to give us these um these faculties in order to survive for me to have a teeth to bite on nails yeah our nails, our fingertips, they all have a function. You get what I'm trying to say? So what we're saying is that it requires and it points to a higher power for him to create us. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I feel like uh, kind of all those traits are only you know, circumstantial in, in the evolutionary process. You know, it's just as like our hands are good at picking berries and things like that. Exactly, but who, who, who give us those faculties in order, for example, let's say our fingers were shorter than before argument's sake, yeah? yeah? Now our fingers are longer. Let's say that was due to surviving, survival of the fittest, yeah. yeah? Again, those faculties have been given that even though that mutation happens, it's not a random process of these these things, yeah? These, um, like atoms or whatever it may be, yeah? That enable that to happen. It must be that the one who set the program enabled it that in a certain situ situation of survival, that your hands might grow stronger, uh, bigger, smaller. So we are still programmed. It's that program that was within itself that enables you have these mutations. What we see is it cannot be a random process, which points to a good. Like for example, our universe, yeah? It cannot come from nothing. Can we agree that it cannot come from nothing? <laughs> like zero, zero it, Yeah, like it wasn't just nothing and then it was Exactly, there, exactly, like. exactly. So we cannot say it came from nothing. Can we say it created its own self? It'd be like an oxymoron. It's like someone <laughs> it's like my mother giving birth to herself. No, yeah, there had to, there had to be a process. I completely respect all the ideas of my time. Yeah. I just can't move past yeah. the that it's just science. Okay, but science, look, science, we use the scientific methods to come to these conclusions, yeah? So science doesn't really contradict. Like, there was a lot of scientists that believed in God, like uh, Darwin, Charles Darwin, he actually believed in, in God, even though he brought the whole evolution theory, yeah? So, be, believing in science and believing in God are not... Um, you know, exclusive, yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is that you can believe, if you look at science, science tells you how things work. But they don't tell you why they work the way they do. For example, the bees have to flap their wings a certain direction to keep their colony at a certain temperature. If it gets too cold, that is intelligence. Would you not say that is intelligence, that the bee knows what temperature is best? And if it flaps its wings one way or the other, it's... Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, of course. So then we're saying, where did that intelligence come from? Who gave that bee the intelligence, or even the sperm? Who told the sperm, yeah, race, bro, race, yo, yo, go, go, yeah, you made it. Who, who gave it those faculties to, number one, the, for example, for a man to produce it, number one, yeah? And then from there, that, obviously, we know how intimacy works, we don't need to get into that, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, it's education here. And then for some reason, the, obviously it's the man that, you know, is penetrating, etc. No, like for some reason, our our private parts, I mean, designed in, in such a way that they're like made for each other, should we say, <laughs> you know, like soulmates. So the point is, and then the sperm comes out and then the sperm is swimming and then, you know, it, it goes and fertilizes the egg and the process starts and you have a whole new human being. I believe that's miraculous. And I believe that, I believe personally that points to God Almighty, like it shows how magnificent it is. Like if, if look, 
If I if I if I prove God exists, would you not agree that he's magnificent? If I we, think it's magnificent in itself. I just I just don't believe. I just can't like What evidence would you want to believe? Look at that tattoo. Look at that tattoo. Look, that's somebody designed that tattoo. Somebody gave it those colours. Yeah, and you probably asked them to write is it slug? Yeah I did. Yes. <laughs> exactly, yeah. That, that one you, you you told them to do, yeah. But again, it's like the artist. Yeah? If you see an art, it tells you a lot about the artist. I mean that's quite a nice tattoo. It tells me a lot about the guy, the, the man or the woman who done it, yeah? So I would say he's, he's number one, he exists. Number two, he's, he's intelligent. Number two, he's a, good, he's a good artist. So you see, when we look at ourselves and the whole universe, it shows us how magnificent God must be. Because just as I look at a fine art piece, and I'm like, oh my God, it's magnificent. The guy, I want to meet the guy who did this, or like the planes, the person who invented it. We, we glorify them, do you get what I'm trying to say? So it's just thought provoking. I mean, yeah. if you have any questions, yeah, yeah I don't want to hurt you guys well. longer, but I'll just give you one of these. Yeah, we'll take one. Thank you for your time. It was a pleasure. I'll take that, yeah. Thank you. Have a nice time Thank and you. enjoy yourself. And you can watch this on my channel. My name is Ali Dawa. I'll definitely look it up. Check it out. Have a nice day. It was very nice. A nice classes once again. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. As you can see, guys, we had a nice discussion here, thought provoking discussion. It's just sometimes we just need to get them thinking. That's what it is. Sometimes we just need to get them to think. That's what it is. Sometimes, you know, we expect people to accept this time here and there. Now, no, it doesn't work like that. You give people time. Myself, I had to listen to many speeches, many speakers, many books, many things in order to slowly, slowly come to the decision of that God Almighty exists. It's about 10 minutes. Yeah, thank you.